We thank Allah for sending Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa It's important for us to make mention of this because you won't realize the gift that we have until you see the darkness that the globe was in. A lot of what we see today as civilization was brought by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They don't know. Why? They hijacked it. They took it. Then they blamed us to be the hijackers. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. So we have here the Persians. They used to worship the fire. They used to worship many other things. From amongst them also we had some who worshipped idols. And some who worshipped people, hierarchy. And there were so many different types of confused people. If you look at the Romans, after a while, when Christianity came down, you find every king that came, he changed the Bible. And proudly they would say, King James version of the Bible. That means this is a version of the Bible which that king made. And he brought it forth. Then another version of the Bible. This man came, another man came, he changed it. That Pope came, he changed it. This is why today we have more than 36 different versions of the Bible. The Christians themselves cannot unite upon one. And we say this with due respect. It's a fact. So, as things were changed in order to suit the kings of the time, there was chaos and confusion. People started adding and subtracting until they raised Isa alayhi salatu was salam or Jesus may peace be upon him to the level of Godhood and made him part of the Trinity. For your information, the, Roman, the Romans also fought or the, the Christian denominations fought each other. They fought the Coptic Christians in Egypt as well. Why? Because of who was Jesus? Was he a part of a trinity? What happened to him? So amongst the Christians they began to fight. Because that king added something, this pope added something, this one added, and the others are saying, but we don't know what we would term today bid'ah. It's something new. It's innovated in the deen. It's come here. We need to take it out. And wars took place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from innovation. Then you have the wars that took place between the Romans and the Persians. And this is also mentioned in the Quran. These wars were from a long time. And for your information, the Persians were considered more powerful, but each one feared the other. And sometimes this one won, sometimes that one won, and it took place for a long, long time. Then you have the Indian subcontinent, where we have the Hindus and the Buddhists, those who worship the Buddha. And the Hindus, as you know, hierarchies. They worship people. You have the clergy, the Brahman, right at the top. And then you have the others coming down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from worshipping people. Inna Allah abta'atha muhammadan li yukhrija al-ibad min ibadati al-ibad ila ibadati rabbi al-ibad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to remove people from worshipping other worshippers to worshipping the Rabb of the worshippers, the creator of everyone else. So we are not supposed to be worshipping the created. We only worship the creator. When I put my head down on the ground, whom am I putting it down on the ground for? Only the one who made me. No one else. Whoever made me, I owe him my head on the ground. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. Then we have some of the other civilizations around that are mentioned in the Quran and some of the previous nations that were within the Arabian Peninsula. You have the people of Saba in Yemen. And you have the people of Ad and Thamud who were also in the peninsula. The people of Ad were in a place known as Ahqaf, slightly south of, the, of Mecca or south of that part of the Arabian Peninsula. And the people of Thamud were slightly north. And these were the people. And as you know, there was also at that particular time the Jews, the Christians, the fire worshippers, as I mentioned, the Buddhists and so on. And then you have the people of Mecca and the Arabs of the surroundings. Who were they? Who were they? If we take a careful look, we will notice that from a religious perspective, they worshipped idols. They believed in superstition. Today, a lot of us are superstitious. Small things happen. We say, no, if the black cat passes, then this is happening. If the owl sits on your roof, that's happening. If a crow comes this way, that happens. If we still have this jahiliya in us, and Allah says those were the pagan Arabs, they had a lot of superstition. Small things happen, oh, definitely this. You see the women comb their hair. When they comb their hair, they put it in a ball. Some of it falls out. When they put it in the ball, sometimes the wind blows it. It's very light to a corner. 
And after a while, when they find their own hair in the corner, see someone's doing black magic here. Allahu Akbar. Typical. But sister, it's your hair. The wind blew it on the side. What are you doing this for? Why do you want to blame people? It's the jahiliyyah. May Allah protect us. This is why even those who think that black magic has happened upon them, perhaps in the rare cases it may be, how to help yourself? We will come through that in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it happened to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you have, they used to go to fortune tellers at the time. Anything small happens, go to a fortune teller. Anything little happens, they would quickly run here and there. People want to tell what's the future. There was a man who told me that I was at one of the airports and a man came to me and told me, I can tell you your future. So he is a Muslim. He says, I don't want to know. No, I can tell you. So this man walked with his wife. He took his wife and said, hey, leave this man alone. And the man persisted and he insisted. And he said, I can tell you your future. And he sat down with them. And this man, Muslim, he says, look, please get away. I don't want to hear anything. He says, no, I just charge very little. Don't worry. I'll, I'll give you a discount. I charge you $5. Whatever the figure was, I can't recall. But the man started saying, oh, you live this long and this is what will happen and you'll have this child and that. And the man, these people were not even bothered. They weren't even really listening. When he finished, he looks at the man and says, right, pay me. So this Muslim man told me, that I told him, I said, you know what? You claim to know the future. You know so much of the future, you should have known that I'm not paying you. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Our difficulty, we still go to fortune tellers. We want to see what's going on. People go to witch doctors and they don't realize how the witch doctor works. It's very logical, logical meaning. We would be able to explain to you how the jinn kind is used as spirit and called spirit mediums. Where do they come from? How to talk to them? How to communicate them? How to use them? But all that in Islam is prohibited. We can explain it to you and we know how it works. But it is prohibited and we need to know this. We need to know this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. Wallahi, we have ahead of us 29 to 30 nights. And we have a seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I don't wish to take up too much of your time because you have to come back tomorrow to listen to what more we have. And we will continue tomorrow from where? Insha'Allah making mention of the people of Jahiliyyah within the Arabian Peninsula, what they were involved in, insha'Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for them that this Nabi will be raised from amongst them. And insha'Allah, I hope and I pray we can realize the gift we are in today. We are sitting so pure with our women elevated to the highest level. Neither are our women being conned by the liberation or the word freedom today nor are they being oppressed but they are taught to fulfill their role as muslim women and that we will come to realize when we see both extremes until we meet again tomorrow if allah gives us the life and the opportunity to be here again inshallah we meet we say wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad subhanallah bihamdihi subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu